I'm the host of the Fan Sage Dan's Air. Thrilled to see all of you here. We've got an amazing panel. This is a fabulous crowd, and I don't blame you when I saw this on the schedule. I can legitimately say, I want to see this. And then I saw the panelists were, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely going to see this. Welcome to How Ray Defined a New Star Wars Generation. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. All the Ray fans out there, it's amazing to see. I, I've seen so many Ray cosplays throughout the day that I, I'm just blown away by just the character and how much he's grown. Uh, it really is incredible. Uh, welcome again to How Ray Defined a New Star Wars Generation. This is a panel all about Ray celebrating her legacy, uh, why she's a timeless character, why she means so much to so many, and where she can go in the future. We're gonna be celebrating her journey throughout all three films and what she means to fans all over the world. I am here with an amazing group of panelists to make that happen. I want them to introduce themselves. Uh, I haven't, I don't know if I've said my name. My name is Andres Cabrera. I'm here with an amazing group of panelists. I want you to introduce yourselves. Tell us where we can find you and just for fun, well, you guys can play along. Give us your favorite Star Wars pilot. There's a lot of amazing Star Wars pilots, but everyone has a favorite. Let's yeah, start with you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Molly Damon, and I am one half of Star Wars Explained. And <laughs> I, I would be afraid to say anything other than Biggs Darklighter right now. <laughs> so Biggs Darklighter, for sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lacey Gillern. I'm part of the Resistance broadcast. Um, thank you. I'm also channeling Lindsay Lohan with my voice today. Uh, my favorite pilot is Han Solo. I'm Laura Kelly. I'm one half of Force Toast to Star Wars Happy Hour and one half of uh, thank you. One half of the, the Jedi Way with John Roca on his YouTube channel. And my favorite uh, pilot is Hera Syndulla. Are we doing math? I'm one third of oh, one TRB. Third. <laughs> Uh, my name is Arzu. I am the host of Space Waffles. <laughs> Thank you. And my favorite pilot is Poe Dameron because he's one hell of a pilot. And my name is Maggie. I am one fourth of the Outer Rim Beacon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm going to say Ben Solo is my favorite pilot. <laughs> Giving the people what they want. Uh, I am also going to second Hera. Hera's my favorite pilot, just so you guys know. <laughs> all righty, let's kick things off all the way back to 2015. We get the announcement, obviously, of this new Star Wars sequel, but we realize now that this journey that we're gonna partake in is gonna be centered around a female character, which is something that, obviously, Star Wars has had amazing female characters in the past with Leia, Padme, who's one of my favorites, but there's something special about centering an entire sequel trilogy around a female character. And I feel like that's a really significant thing that's never really been done in Star Wars as much as we love the originals and the prequels. You know, that's Luke's and Anakin's story. This is Rey's story in the sequels. How did that feel to realize that this story is gonna be told through the perspective and centered around a female character, a force user of that matter, Molly? I mean, it, it was incredible. We started our YouTube channel in 2014, I think. And uh, just finding all of that out, I was like, as a woman, I was like, I'm so excited to be a part of some something this big and be able to like talk about it on the internet. And it, it was just super exciting. I don't think I'd be here today and be as big of a part of a channel uh, as our YouTube channel if it weren't for Ray. So. I feel like Ray, again, means so much. There, there's so many moments, but I really want to point out the power of The Force Awakens, Lacey, mm -hmm. and how there is that scene in The Force Awakens where Ray summons the lightsaber to herself and then confronts Kylo Ren. That scene specifically, walk me through seeing that for the first time in theaters, opening night, I'm assuming. You did your research, sir, because this is my favorite scene. Um, I, 
it, it was really emotional for me because I grew up with the original trilogy and then obviously the prequels, which I was like, where's Luke Skywalker? He's not in the prequels. Um, so then The Force Awakens came out and naturally I was looking for Luke because I had grown up with the original trilogy, but that moment where she grabs the saber, I was, I was just kind of emotional and overtaken with, this is what I've always wanted as a fan growing up. Uh, you know, I love Leia and I love Luke and I love Han, but to have a female character just have such a strong moment and, and not need to be saved and take it on her own and like be a Jedi is unreal. Like a woman holding a lightsaber, that was like game changing for me. Um, and it's easily one of my favorite moments ever, if not my favorite moment, especially now that I'm a mom, it's one of those things that I can't wait for my daughter to get to see when she's old enough. Absolutely. I want to jump to you, Maggie. Um, you've been a Star Wars fan for a while. I, I know that you've grown up with the prequels as I have. How did it feel as an already Star Wars fan to see this new set of films that are being produced and made to be centered around a female character and to kind of deviate from the usual formula of like the cool dude Jedi bro who's like going on his adventures. <laughs> Uh, it was really exciting because Rey, uh, with The Force Awakens, she was a nobody. She was this character that she, she wasn't a senator, she wasn't a princess, she didn't have anything to her name. And she was able to like develop this legacy for herself and that was like everything to me because like Padme and Leia are so wonderful but like they have that like legacy to them uh, and Rey just kind of set the stage for her own story, her own journey and like that was everything to me when The Force Awakens came out. Like, like that reignited my love for Star Wars because I was like, like, yes, anyone can be a Jedi, anyone can be a Force user, and women, like, women finally get to see themselves, like, in the center of the story, and it was just, it was everything. Speaking of which, Arzu, I want to go to you. I know you love Rey, and this is one of your favorite characters. If you had to sum up, and I know it's a lot to ask, <laughs> what does Rey mean to you? Oh, damn, okay. Um, <laughs> she is kind of, she is to me my personal gateway into like larger Star Wars fandom because for a while I had kind of fallen out of it and I was like, this is a comfort thing, this is off to the side, but then in comes this woman, kind of like what Maggie said, taking her own power out of nothing and sort of, she knows this wide world exists around her and she is going to find her place in this, in this world even though everybody might have an advantage, everybody's a little bit ahead, but she's like, no, this is, this is sort of, I'm gonna carve my place. And that was sort of my personal journey into like larger fandom. So it's corny, but it feels like it mirrored my experience a little bit, sort of coming into all this. So, so that's why she's always like, she's there always. She's like the comfort character, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, Laura, I wanna go to you with a similar question because I feel like the thing that sets Rey apart from so many different characters that we've seen before, because we've seen amazing female Jedi, we've seen Luminara, we've seen Ayla, Sakura, but centering a story around a female force user, someone who has that power, that power that as a kid we all dreamed about, you know, using the force and using the mind tricks and all this stuff, but seeing that come from a female character and come in, in a way that obviously in the moment it was so controversial because she was so powerful, even though we've seen many men before her be just as powerful, if not more powerful without having any training, but her, having that power and having those force abilities and being that Jedi center figure. How did that feel for you? I mean, it was amazing. And I, I, I was still very, I was still a very new Star Wars fan in 2015 when I you know, first saw these trailers and I was kind of entering the fandom at that point. Um, and you know, I I'd kind of always had a fandom to call home before that. So the fact that there was this female lead in this movie franchise just didn't seem all that unusual to me. And it wasn't until I sat down and actually sat, you know, went back and watched all of the original movies. I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is a special thing. Um, and then, you know, going back and watching the Clone Wars and we got Ahsoka and we got, you know, to see the Clone Wars through her eyes and the prospect of getting to see this whole new era in 2015 of Star Wars storytelling through another female character's eyes, I think was so special. Absolutely. Um, I want to jump to kind of the premise of this whole panel, which is how Ray define a new Star Wars generation. That's a bold take, right? I mean, to, to say that she defined a new Star Wars generation, I mean, it's only been three years since we've seen, you know, the finale of the trilogy. But I can really say that that's the case. From personal experience, this panel 
was inspired from a friend of mine who never saw a single Star Wars before watching the sequels. She saw her first film was The Force Awakens, and she became a Star Wars fan because of Rey, and Rey meant so much to her that she invested in the rest of the movies and she invested in everything else that came before, and seeing her excitement at Rey and seeing how much Rey inspired her to become a Star Wars fan kind of made me realize, like, this is something that we shouldn't take for granted. We should realize, like, wow, this is a very significant character. Uh, maybe we should acknowledge it a little bit more. And, and a second thing for me was my mom's reaction to The Force Awakened, uh, which she's watched Star Wars movies in the past, but seeing her reaction to Rey and seeing her face light up like I've never seen before made me realize, like, this cannot just touch on a newer generation, but on older generations who've never really seen a kind of story like this. So my question to you guys is, is there some sort of story or moment that you realize, like, this character is maybe even bigger than the Star Wars that we know, and this could impact people from different fandoms and different backgrounds and make new Star Wars fans? Um, okay, so my cousin was maybe six when The Last Jedi came out, so she was too small to go to the theater. She wasn't gonna sit through it. But she had seen The Force Awakens at home, and you know she was into it because all of her cousins are into it. And then one Christmas we had put on A New Hope just because it's safe for kids to have it on. And she sees, she sees Leia and she's like, oh, that's the girl from Star Wars. And it took a second to realize she meant Rey. And I'm like, no, honey, that's the, that's the older lady from The Force Awakens. And she's looking at me like I have three heads. She's got no <laughs> idea what I'm talking about because to her, like, Rey is Star Wars. Like, that was it. So if there's a young woman there, it's definitely Rey. And I was like, okay, I like this. Like, this is clearly like who this was for, was, was her. Absolutely. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I think for me, it's just seeing all the instances of little girls dressed up as Rey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said earlier, gr growing up, I had Luke Skywalker, I had Princess Leia. I really looked up to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I was like really same. <laughs> um, so to have someone like tough like Rey, it, it's interesting to see little girls take that on um, from seeing them holding her hand in Galaxy's Edge or you know, going to fan kind of costume groups and they swarm Ray. I've seen people share photos with us about that. Um, it's just, it means a lot because it's something that I would have loved to have at my, in, during my childhood. And knowing that the next generation is having that is just such a wonderful thing. Yeah, I feel like doing stuff like this too, like all of us have similar stories about Ray inspiring us to be more involved in the community, more involved in fandom, and just doing more stuff like this, it has made a huge impact. Absolutely, uh, Lacey, it's funny you, you touched upon that, because I brought a few of those images. Oh. Um, every time I see these- The it, buns, every time you see the <laughs> buns walking or like bouncing. Yes. Yeah. It, it really kind of goes to show, like it, it, it makes a lot, it makes a huge difference. It, it, it does matter, like it really does. And, and it matters to a newer generation and seeing that newer generation and realizing like, it's not always about us, even though we want it to always be about us in our generation. Um, shout out to my prequel fans. Um, but it, it goes to show like, growing up with this new character and realizing like this is gonna spark so many new Star Wars fans who only know this Star Wars, like that's something that we have to register. And obviously yeah, as long time Star Wars, Star Wars fans, yeah. we are like hesitant to register that. But how does, how does that feel knowing that there's gonna be so many new little kids around the world going up with these Star Wars movies, Laura? I mean, I love what it's led to, and even since the sequel trilogy. I mean, I, you, you, we get these great photos of, of these little girls with Rey, and I remember so clearly at Celebration 2017 seeing like the little gins. Um, with Leia too, and it was, I mean, I like all the stuff that it's, that it's, you know, grown from, from this exact moment of like introducing this great new character in the sequel trilogy as our lead, and now, you know, we're getting even more diverse characters in the High Republic, and, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that it's, I feel like it's really added this kind of snowball effect um, that's happened really, really quickly in Star Wars that I really appreciate. Yeah, and I feel like the positive reaction that we got with Ray's introduction really helped. Like you were saying, like it's a snowball effect. Like we're getting so many more female characters, so many more diverse characters, and I feel like Ray was that 
the launch point for this new era of Star Wars. I mean, that's why we're here for this panel. She started everything for us. Yeah, I like that she was also super smart. Like, she wasn't mm -hmm. just a Jedi. Like, she could pilot stuff, and she could fix things, and she was tough, and that's, that was a rare thing, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I love Leia. She's tough, but, like, she was wearing fancy clothes and, like, doing government stuff. Yeah. Like, she wasn't exactly, <laughs> she wasn't exactly piloting the Millennium Falcon around. And Ray's, like, streetwise, you know? Yes. We had Luke yes. whining about, like, wanting to go get power converters, <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's value in all of that, but the fact that Ray had, like, the street smarts of having, you know, had to grow up independently. Yeah, Finn reacting to her fighting yes. with those guys in TFA is so perfect, where he's like, mm -mm, okay, I don't need her to help her. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I love seeing, you know, this new generation just grew up with this character. But I, I want to jump to some fun stuff. Let's jump into, give me uh, your favorite or just like a fun Ray moment or a badass Ray moment that you always kind of like cater to as far as like one of your favorites that you feel embodies the character or that you just vibe with. I love the Last Jedi fight scene between, yes, it is <laughs> so good. I love every, I remember when that happened in the movie theater, it was just like everybody was just quiet and everyone was just taking it in. And I think it just really showed like she's a scrappy fighter, she's good, and she works well in a team. Like they worked so well together. And I go back and I rewatch that scene all the time because it just felt like Star Wars. Like this is what I am here for. And Rey is just like, she's everything in that moment because she's, she's ready to fight and she's ready to even sway opinions and try to find good in everyone. And I love that about her. So I'm very tempted to talk about the four spawn scenes because the like snarly gremlin girl and the quiet guy is just very funny to me. But I'm going to talk about a race specific moment from The Last Jedi, which is her with the lightsaber kind of on the rock, like just mm -hmm. practicing on her own. Because up to this point, she's kind of been really overwhelmed with everything going on, like this new power inside her. She doesn't know where she is. Luke Skywalker's not listening. But this is a moment just for her. It feels both like meditative and kind of her sort of being like, I don't need anybody to coach me through this. I'm going to take my own power and just kind of let's, let's see how this lightsaber thing works. And it's just, it's like that glimmer of her kind of strength and independence shining out through the, the insecurity that she might have been feeling up to that point. So, yeah. We're going to stay on Octo for a minute because <laughs> one of my favorite moments in all of um, in all of the Last Jedi was that you know the line where she's talking with Luke about the Force and she's talking about you know the the island life death decay that feeds new life and how it's all about balance and energy and I loved that moment because it was kind of a it was taking a step back and going back to basics for Star Wars you know we got that speech from Obi-Wan in A New Hope about what the Force is. And I feel like, you know, in Star Wars Rebels, we got to see a lot of that play out with, with Kanan and, and Ezra. But in, when we were back in, like, the prequel era, you know, in that, in that time period, when the Jedi were generals in a war, we kind of got away from that. So taking that step back in The Last Jedi and kind of remembering, like, oh, yeah, this is, this is what the Force is and this is what Star Wars is uh, was really powerful for me. Uh, mine is when Ray is talking with Han Solo in the Millennium Falcon when they're trying to take off and he doesn't know what's going on and she's like, oh, you need a co-pilot? <laughs> and he's just like so angry and grumpy and she's just like knows what to fix and the whole thing of like, I bypass the compressor. I bypass the and he's compressor. just like, he just goes, huh? And just walks out. Like it's just so perfect with like this grumpy old jaded guy and like Ray who's like on this adventure. She's excited. She knows what she does. She's smart. She's like, I, I can help you here. Uh, it's just perfect. One of my favorite moments uh, from Rise of Skywalker is, uh, you mentioned it earlier, the, the moment with Dio uh, when Ray is helping him out and you know, she tells him like, you're with us now. So she is in, in a position to be able to say that to something else, someone else, and that's really important to show, you know, how far she's come. I, I, I'm so glad you brought that up, Molly. That is literally one of my favorite moments of all of Star Wars. I, I really feel like it embodies who Rey is, a character who's so kind enough to consider, like, a little goofy droid, and she really wants to help this droid, which shows her nature and her heart really is good inside, no matter, obviously, with the Rise of Skywalker, no matter what is in her blood, she still has the ability and has the heart to do what she wants, which is to help everyone she can, which is what you know the movie finishes with, which is why it's my favorite moment. I love Rey just being called out by all the Jedi and standing up to her feet and defeating the Emperor. I think it's incredible. And I think it, it really did move a lot of people 
Uh, and I love it. That's just my opinion. Um, let's move on to a little bit of what you were talking about, Molly, which is Ray's, Ray's complexity as far as a character. What I love about Ray is that she's not a perfect character. She has flaws. Um, she obviously has a background that she considers in The Rise of Skywalker as being you know, this black patch in her life that she's not sure how to deal with. What I love about Ray is that she has these dark sides and these dark abilities. How do you feel like that can communicate as far as to a younger audience different emotions and different shades of anger, of gray, of what it is to be a human being? And her darkness and her kind of different sides shows a different side of Ray and can communicate these kind of ideas, these bigger ideas to a younger audience. Laura? Oh, let's start with me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I think the greatest thing about that is sort of how they kind of spaced that out in the sequel trilogy. I mean, we got, you know, especially when you're talking about some of those darker moments. I mean, we didn't get a ton of the darker moments in, in The Force Awakens, and then we kind of added a little bit in, in The Last Jedi. By the time we got to the, you know, the Rise of Skywalker, we're seeing full-blown, like, dark ray. <laughs> and even, the, like, in the trailer, I remember that moment so clearly and how everybody in the room freaked out at Celebration 2019. Um, but I think, it was, I think it was just really well spaced out, the way that they kind of, they let it evolve very slowly. We all kind of got to go on that journey together. And, you know, if there were younger girls that were kind of getting into Star Wars in 2015, I think that was a good move. Like, we waited a couple of years to go a little bit more dark with the character. I just thought that kind of worked. Yeah, I'm a big Dark Ray fan. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's a big deal. Um, <laughs> but like, just knowing that little girls can watch these movies and see how you know Ray, who's probably you know one of their favorite characters, if not their favorite character, just deal with her emotions and learn how to just navigate that and at the same time have all this power and how to kind of juggle the two. Yeah, I think it's important to show little girls that it's okay not to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I know when I was growing up, it was always like, you know, kind of control your emotions, don't get angry, kind of just be smiley all the time. So I, I enjoy the fact that she does have those moments where she does get angry, she does get upset, and she's like, no, listen to what I'm saying. And I think that's important that women are heard, whether they're happy or not, so, yeah. I also like that she's not at any point punished for her anger. I mm -hmm. feel like that happens a lot in narratives where a woman is angry and then told she's wrong to be angry. Like, this girl has every reason to be very, very angry all the time. And, you know, she's not constantly angry, but, I do like that that scene is just a part of her growth and it's not, it's not something the narrative ever feels the need to punish her for. Yeah, I would agree. I think that it's, it's interesting how Ray kind of harnesses both the dark and the light in a lot of ways. We, we saw it you know, with Luke, obviously, in the original trilogy. And you could almost say that like Luke and Anakin were both punished by losing their hands like their hand literally was like a punishment for kind of that dark side. And we don't see that with Ray, but also I feel like kind of tying in with this idea of like Ray being the launch point for a lot of things. I think how her story was handled in the sequel trilogy helped maybe set the stage for some of these new stories we're getting with the High Republic, where we're seeing Jedi that kind of are torn between kind of darker impulses and the light side, and we're getting to see these new stories. And I, I keep going back and wondering, like, if how Rey's story was presented has then kind of helped propel these stories forward, and that she's really the blueprint for a lot of new stories and characters that we're getting as Star Wars continues to evolve. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, I want to make sure and give a shout out to uh, the fandom, um, <laughs> a few cosplayers that I reached out to um, that love Rey and wanted to. Um, show their love from around the world. That's Mel from Germany, uh, Naeem from UK, and Alex, obviously, from SoCal, USA. Um, I feel like it's amazing to see fans all over the world to be able to feel represented with Ray and to be able to see themselves in Ray and to really feel that experience in those sequel trilogy movies. So I think that's a really cool aspect. Um, I want to move on to the topic you guys all came for. Let's talk about Raylo. Yes. <laughs> we don't talk Let's. about Raylo. No, no. 
I always wanted to do that. I'm sorry. It's in our uh, head now. Thanks. I can't lie. I, the Last Jedi, and I'm going to specifically name The Last Jedi. Shout out to The Force Awakens. I love you. But The Last Jedi really sold us into this relationship. Mm -hmm. it, it, with great dialogue, with really good scenes, with that incredible Force Skype uh, introduction <laughs> that we've never seen before. It really showed us a, a bond that I feel like we've, can I, can I say we've never seen before in Star Wars? Like maybe Han and Leia, like shout out to Han and Leia, but is, is Raylo go? Is it? Yeah, yes. yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, talk to me about why it works and why obviously Adam Driver's performance and Daisy Ridley's performance adds so much to that. And I'll start with you, Maggie, because you're smart. Oh, uh, well, Sunshine Girl and Grumpy Boy is such a great dynamic, and Me to Lover is also a great dynamic. And I think they work because she's like the foil to so many of the things that like he, he didn't have because we see how she bonds with his mother and his father, and they get these moments, and they just mirror each other so much. And Oh, you put me on the spot to talk about my favorite thing, and I'm like, oh my gosh, everything all at once. Um, oh gosh, I'm gonna bounce it to you because I know okay. you. <laughs> so um, the appeal of it to me, besides the performance, besides the chemistry, is just on paper the idea of this of this man who has had every sort of opportunity to be the hero and be the the good guy, and kind of succumbs to the pressure of what comes with that. And then oppose that with a woman who has had every excuse in the book to turn to the dark and and hasn't and has kind of risen in the light sort of thing. They they like Maggie said, they are foils to each other, they offset each other in this really beautiful poetic way. And it sort of seems that when we get to those four Skype scenes in the in The Last Jedi, that they're sort of reaching that middle ground, like mm -hmm. rising to light versus realizing that you don't have to be perfect all the time, you don't have to be sunny all the time, you can give in to your anger a little bit. So having them bring that out in each other is just, in any, in any ship, but because we're talking about Raylo, in, in Raylo is so fascinating and so like beautiful a concept to me. So that's, that's what I really enjoy so about it. you said it. exactly what was in my mind. <laughs> right there. We forced We right forced there. Right there. <laughs> um, romance in Star Wars is my jam. If there is a ship that I can ship, I am 100% I am on board. And I think one of the great things that you know we're all talking about right now with the new Marvel What If series is we, we talk a lot about like what if in Star Wars, and I think back to like the prequels when Anakin, you know, we had this romance with Padme, but Padme wasn't a Force user, and Anakin didn't have anyone to talk to, and then everything spiraled downward for him. And when you think about like, well, what if this person who sort of has these dark side tendencies? had a romantic interest or you know the love interest in someone who was also a force user like what would happen with that and the fact that they you know chose to go that direction in the sequel trilogy i think is is really really fun and now we're kind of expanding those even further in some of like you know the novels i keep going to the high, to the high republic cuz i love it i'm sorry <laughs> it is and that's you know we're, when we're exploring those those ships kind of in that sense in the High Republic of like, all right, well now what if they're both like Jedi and they're both mature and they both have their stuff together? Like what if there's a romance there? Like that, the, way, the way that all of these things have kind of spiraled and built off of each other is really fun. And I think that that kind of what if that they proposed sort of in The Force Awakens and how they kind of built into that more in The Last Jedi and really, let's be honest, leaned into it in The Last Jedi, um, I think is just so perfect. I mean, I just want to, can we gush about the finger touch yes. for just a second? Thank you, like, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. So intimate. <laughs> um, I love the dyad in Star Wars. I, I didn't love it at first. I was like, I'm not sure if I like this, if I understand what it means exactly, but so much of Star Wars is about, you know, the rule of two, the two twins, and now the, the dyad is a thing, and I, I feel like uh, they just complement each other so well, just in the grand scheme of things in Star Wars storytelling, that it just works. It just works. Do you guys have a favorite Raylo moment or line or quote that you guys kind of recall to? Besides the hand touch we were just gushing over? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm jumping on. <laughs> um, I was sure the moment that made me ship it in the first place. It actually was The Force Awakens. It wasn't The Last Jedi. And it's that moment during their duel where he just stops and goes, you need a teacher? Because 
to me, that's him going like, I don't know, that, that he kind of sees that, that something in her that's like, oh, we're like equals in this and like think of what you could be. And it's like, I think enemies to lovers in general hinges on that idea of mutual respect anyway. And because, you know, if, if that's not there and you're not really enemies. So that to me was like, oh, okay. He sees it, so now I see it too. And then, so yeah, that's a, that's a standout moment for me was, was that moment You have every opportunity there. to push her off the cliff. 100%. And, he, and instead he's like, what if we just, <laughs> what if we just had some tutorials, you know, <laughs> refine the technique a little, maybe fall in love along the way. I don't know, I don't know. Like, yeah, see how it plays out. I think that's the same scene that like made me be like, yeah, this is 100% going to be a thing that happens. Uh, and I loved the dynamic because it was very much two sides of the same coin in that the entire way that that scene is framed with the red lightsaber, the blue lightsaber, and they're like pretty much at half with each other. And it just, I was like, yes, this is, this is happening. And then The Last Jedi just kind of like cemented that, that I was like, yep, this is my ship. The lighting then turns purple because the sabers are so close to each other. They have like come together. They are equal in the light and dark. It's just beautiful imagery, beautiful storytelling. You got us started on Raylo, now I we're know. just going to gush for the next half hour. <laughs> I honestly think that uh, outside of The Last Jedi, I think The Rise of Skywalker has some really good moments between Kylo and Rey. I thought that the fight between them was really great. Um, and, you know, her saving him is such an emotional moment for both of them, but also a meaningful moment as, as fans, because even when she had the chance to kill him, she doesn't. She makes the decision to save him. Her, her line afterwards I, with, I, I did want to take your hand, Ben's right, hand. Right, Ben's hand, yeah. And it's Damn. just a knife to the heart. Yeah. <laughs> or to the gut. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes back to that kind of meaningful message with Star Wars of doing the right thing. When, even when things are tough, it, it be the, do the right thing. And that's what Ray, time and time again, does. Even if it's the tough decisions, he does the right one. Yeah, I, I was going to bring up Rise of Skywalker too. I, I love the moment where uh, she's on, uh, he's on Kajimi looking for her, and they have another Force Skype moment. And like he goes, "You're a hard person to find," and she says, "You're hard to get rid of." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like, the quips. Yeah, yeah it, they're they're forming this like cat and mouse game, uh, and it's just really adorable. I, I love the uh, the final moment when they <laughs> see each other for the final time with the Force Skype and the Exegol. Uh, when they're fighting off, and they just, that moment where we just cut to both it of their It shouldn't have faces. been final. Cough, cough. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I love that moment, and, and I, I, let's get into that. Do, do we like the conclusion of, of Raylo? No. <laughs> what do you guys think and, was and supposed to And I don't think it happen? even means that they have to necessarily be together, to be honest. I just don't think he should have died, but that's a different panel for another day. Amen. Guys. Wait. <laughs> I, I agree, for sure. It's just, I don't, I, I, like, I don't have a good answer for when people are like, oh, well, what would have Ben Solo done after the fact? Like, how would he have atoned for all the stuff that he did? I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't want him to die. <laughs> yeah. I always tell people to read the Alphabet Squadron because they handled, like, redemption after doing bad things so well. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just, like, a quick epilogue of, like, oh, I guess this is what happens now. There, is, there are chapters where they have a conversation about what restorative justice looks like, what it looks like for people to sort of make wrong their rights. So, no, make right their wrongs. Wow. <laughs> I support She's going I to support the dark side already. Wrongs. Um, no. So, like, it's sort of like they have these whole conversations about sort of what that looks like in a, in a society kind of recovering from war. So, yes, to echo Maggie, if you wonder what that would look like, please read the Alphabet Squadron trilogy. I was a huge Xena Warrior Princess fan, and that entire <laughs> show it focuses on the premises. I mean, it's like multiple seasons of just righting your wrongs and a redemption arc that lasts over and over again. So I'm like, the, the, there are stories that have been told like that. There was an option to go that way, I think. I don't know. And there's a lot of good storytelling that can come out of that. Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, because we know that like he has a history with Poe, like they grew up around each other, and there's a lot of fun things that can play with that dynamic, and then bridging kind of what's happened with him and Finn, and there's just a lot of really fun dynamics that can be explored with that. So you know maybe you should go to the world between worlds and like find them. Who knows? Before anybody, we we are aware of how it works. We don't need to be told. We, yes, <laughs> we still believe in it though. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like 
Ray's character. I, I love her journey throughout all three films. Um, obviously, The Force Awakens kind of going on this adventure from a scavenger and trying to realize who she is in this journey uh, to The Last Jedi, training and trying to figure out what her place is in this whole galactic war that is happening. And obviously to the rise of Skywalker with literally the weight of the universe on her shoulders uh, and trying to overcome that, which she does. What film do you guys feel best embodies the character of Rey and best writes around the character of Rey? And is everyone gonna say The Last Jedi? Maybe. TFA. Last oh, Jedi. okay. Way. All right. Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. <laughs> um, I, I can totally see the argument for TFA, so I, I might go with that too. That's welcome. What I was, welcome to the team. <laughs> I was thinking to TFA. Just when I think of a lot of my favorite Ray moments, I, I think of TFA. Yeah, absolutely. I, ju I just think she's the way she's introduced is one of the best introductions in Star Wars. From like her coming down the the sand thing and everything. Yeah, uh, her music is beautiful. John Williams. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just her being found and then her going on this adventure and her constantly being like, I need to go back, I need to go back, which we see with Han Solo and also Solo's Star Wars story, like I need to go back. But her accepting that she has this gift and she can help write what's going on in the galaxy and help other people and she's willing to do that really shines as who she is as a person. And I think that that's why I like TFA. That, and it also makes me happy. That, you know, I don't leave it depressed. So that's, that's so fun. <laughs> I think I have time for one more major question before I let it for the audience. If, if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any statements you want to make, I do have three Ray Funko Pops right up here on this stage. These are, in fact, giveaways. I was going to do trivia, and then I realized I, I probably shouldn't do trivia. Because um, I don't want to stump you guys with my ridiculous questions. Um, so I figured, let's just do you know, first person gets dibs um, as far as asking a question. If you guys are brave enough to ask a question, then you guys have first dibs on a Ray Funko Pop. Yeah, I think there's a mic right there. Um, but let's finish off with this question before we go to you guys in the audience. Where does Ray go from here? Where does the character go? We've heard people talk about possibly a series. Uh, we've heard, you know, do we see her in other movies as a you know, Jedi Master training the next generation. What do you guys think? I want to hear from every one of you. She goes wherever she wants. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> like, does. I just want her to be happy. <laughs> yeah. She has the opportunity now to kind of explore the galaxy. And, you know, we saw a little uh, smidge of it in the Lego holiday special. Let her train Finn. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's a good answer. Good answer. Uh, she uses her yellow lightsaber finally because we got it for like two seconds and she didn't even fight with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the belonging you seek is not behind you, it is ahead, is one of my favorite quotes in all of Star Wars. And I would, I, I don't know what the answer is of what's ahead, but I'm on board for any of it to see where she goes and where does she ultimately find that belonging in this new world of the post First Order era. With her lightsaber. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't have a good answer story-wise, but I would love to see her story continue in a novel or a mm -hmm. comic. Mm -hmm. Because you can really, novel in particular, because you can like really get into her head, into her headspace, and kind of, I feel like we haven't had enough time sort of with Ray and how she's feeling. So a novel would be the best way to do that. So that's what I'd like to see. I would love to see her find other force users and train them and maybe play into that mural that we saw in uh, The Last Jedi, which is like the light and dark side and trying to find that balance and creating a new Jedi order that is actually functional and allows people to like actually be themselves and not be like monks uh, and finding that new balance and kind of paving the way forward. Oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, thank you guys so much. Let's go to uh, the audience questions. Uh, we'll start with you, sir. Give us your name and just a question. Hi, my name is Jaris Maragopoulos. Um, I wanted to ask you about your position on Ray's embodiment of fandom in general more than any other character we've seen before her. Ray is a fan of the Star Wars stories and her abilities in this show her engagement with the things that she loves. How does Ray? for you represent what you love in fandom and the capacity of fans to be good to one another? 
That, that is a great question. It's a really good you, question. Said, you said your name was Jerry? Jerry Smargopoulos, Yavin Radio Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Love the shout out. Great. Um, I, you know, the moment where she's kind of geeking out about Luke Skywalker at the beginning of TFA and when she's like, you're Han Solo, like that's literally me. Like if at any moment when I'm just like, oh my God, it's Star Wars. Uh, if someone could be talking across the room and if I hear it, I'm like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so that's, it's just important, you know, to see those stories carried on in the sequel trilogy was just so exciting. Um, so as we were just talking about with what lies ahead, it will be interesting to see if those ser- stories carry on or we're going to get the stories from the sequel trilogy that then carry on. Anybody? I think you said everything with yeah. that answer. Oh, right. yeah. I was going to bring up the moment where she was gushing about Luke Skywalker. That's, that's a yeah. perfect fangirl moment, and I yeah. love that it's in Star Wars. And then she meets him, and it didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> The Jerry's. Han Solo quote lives in my head rent free because of the because of the fangirl energy that comes off of that. Like you're Han Solo. I'm like yes, okay. Yes. That that is all of us. Yes. Uh, before you take your seat, if you want to come up here, Jerry's, um, and grab one of these Ray Funko Pops, and then we'll move on to our next question. Yeah, you mm-hmm. get to keep uh, one of these. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jenna, no podcast. I just have a quick, <laughs> I just have a quick poll question for everyone on what your canon Ray is, if it's Ray Nobody, or Ray Kenobi, Ray Palpatine, it's not an option, or Ray Solo. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was delayed. Uh, Ray Nobody, uh, because yeah. I love that she is not someone's granddaughter, that she's not somebody's sister, that she's not somebody's mother, that she's not connected to anyone that we knew before. I loved Ray Nobody and what that meant for women in fandom. Like, we didn't have to have a connection to the sequel trilogy or to the original trilogy or to the prequel trilogy. We could just find ourselves in Ray. Sure. And of course, Ray Palpatine is an option. Of that. <laughs> is no, it's not. Is it? <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, I'm going to echo that and say Ray Nobody because it, it, it was nice to not attribute her ability to anybody but herself. Because particularly we don't, a man. Particularly a man because we don't ask those questions about any of the male Jedi. So I thought that was a bad faith question and that's why I, I prefer the, the Ray Nobody angle. Mm-hmm. I will always be team Ray Nobody. But I also have this sort of nostalgia for the time even before The Last Jedi came out where we all were still... And we were speculating so much, like, and, you know, they say speculate responsibly, and none of us do. <laughs> but that was just, it was just such a fun time where, it, like, all of us had the question of, you know, is she Luke Stott? Like, I, it was just kind of a fun time to think on all of that. But I love that answer that Ryan Johnson gave us, which is that you don't have to be somebody to be the hero in this story. So I'll always be team Ray Nobody. We never learn with the whole speculate responsibly thing. No. No. We never will. <laughs> Uh, I'm definitely Ray Kenobi team. Uh, <laughs> I was from the TFA when he speaks to her. The fact that JJ went and got Ewan to do the line. Um, she's British. It just like <laughs> <laughs> kind of made sense. Um, I also, you know, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who's not watched Obi Wan Kenobi. I'm not going to do that. But there are moments in that show that kind of look like Ray, and I was just like. This could have been perfect. <laughs> Literally last Anakin night. Anakin and, and Kenobi in the beginning, and then their bloodline fighting at the end. It would have been awesome. Uh, but I respect their decision. <laughs> uh, I love the moment in Rise of Skywalker when they're on Pasana and she's talking to the Nambi Gima, and you know, she just says, Ray, just Ray. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Ray, nobody. Uh, I'll, can, can I be the final one? I'm so sorry, guys. I, I love the Rise of Skywalker, and I love Ray Skywalker. Um, I love Ray Nobody too, but I love that she chooses to to take on that name and that she wants to be a Skywalker, and and not her bloodline, not her Palpatine, has to tell her what to do or what to say and what to be. She can choose who she wants to be, and she wants to be that, and she feels inspired by Leia and by Luke. Uh, so I, I love that, and I think it's a great moment. And uh, you can come up and get your Funko Pop. I'm good. I will donate it to any, if there's a little girl here who wants it. I have Ray's. So thank you very much. Got it. Uh, I'll find the little girl. (laughs) I'll be on the lookout. There's little girls over here. Not to be a creep. Oh, there's (laughs) a little girl. Right there.
That sounded creepy as soon as I said it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do we want to call on the one that's back there raising her hand? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's come on up. I know Jenna's going to come get it for her. She's going to get it for her. Oh, okay. uh, and while she does, let's get the uh, next I'll question. Coming up. Um, hi, I'm Kim Nobody, and um, <laughs> I'm going to ask about the, the dark side of Ray becoming the center of the sequel trilogy because it's not a secret that lots of fans thought that a, whim, a woman being the center of a journey like this was like the worst thing. It ruined their entire childhood, which, boy, there are a lot of other things that can ruin your childhood than having... You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wondered if you guys had... Um, I'm all pro... I'm, I am Team Ray to the end, but um, any thoughts about that and um, what you would say to someone who's like, she ruined everything. What would we say to someone that says Ray ruins everything? Uh, you're wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're an idiot. Just, just get out. <laughs> yeah, do you want to go? Uh, no? That's you're what I would have said to oh. them. Get out. Get out? Okay, that's your answer. <laughs> um, I, you know, my response to that is usually like, okay, well, who do you like then? And then I draw connections to Ray being like, okay, well, that character that you like, Ray actually does that too. Um, I think it's a jarring thing for people to be like, well, Luke and Han, and then you're, they're like, well, Ray knows everything, and you're like, well, Luke didn't know anything, and he took down the Death Star. Like, what? Um, it's just, people are going to like and dislike what they like and dislike. Um, I just kind of say, like, okay, that's cool. I love her. She's great. You want to hear how much I like her? And then they <laughs> usually walk away, and they're like, that's my way. That's how I handle it. <laughs> I, I'd love to take this one too, just coming from, from my perspective. Uh, I, I've heard, you know, that there was a lot of weird stuff coming before The Force Awakens and after The Force Awakens. When it comes to this concept of this character, who is this character for? And obviously, it, it is for me. Little girls <laughs> growing up with, you know, a, a new character with this kind of ability. But I, I can kind of counter that, and, and I, I'm a massive fan of Ray. And I can say. Ray can mean a lot to anyone. Little boys and little girls mm -hmm. can look up to Ray, and I feel like that is an easy thing to take in. And she's a badass. I think she's awesome, and she does so much in all three films. So to me, I think there's just so much to love with the character that if anyone wants to dismiss it simply because she's a female, is kind of stupid on their part. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, you're well not said. going to sway those people's opinions. So it's it's like just love what you love and don't focus on the hate. It's like so easy to kind of get in the hate spiral and like fight with people online about things, but like they're never going to be swayed. So just focus on what you love. Again, just keep going like, here's all the reasons why I love this person. <laughs> they usually walk away. Exhaust them with your enthusiasm. Exactly. <laughs> and you get the uh, final Funko, which I believe is Ray with the post jacket? Poe slash Finn's jacket? Yeah, Poe's oh. jacket. When she's driving the car in TFA that you don't see. That yeah, don't see. <laughs> that deleted seat, so come on up and get oh, it. Oh, she's actually, I guess she wears it when she's crawling up the, <laughs> climbing up the ladder. I'll also hand that off to a young Ray fan. Oh, oh. any Ray fan? Any more? Yeah, this okay, one right here. One okay, right here. I'll bring it, to, yep, I'll bring it down to you after. You don't have to come Or up. if you want to come up, go, go or ahead. You, I mean, she can. She's, she's on her way. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, your name and your question. Hey, I'm Mike, I'm also from Yavin Radio. <laughs> um, uh, so my question, uh, Maggie sort of talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, w if and when Ray builds a new Jedi Order or a new whatever order, what do you all hope would be different about the new Jedi? They all get to go to therapy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if Anakin had just had therapy, uh, we wouldn't have had a lot of other stuff to say about this. <laughs> I think it would be nice if we didn't treat the dark side as completely taboo, because yes. I feel like making it as this distant thing that you have to be afraid of is what tempts Jedi. It's like when you tell a kid, like, don't do this, and they instantly yeah. want to do this. It's Conceal, like don't feel is a bad idea. Exactly. <laughs> like, embrace your feelings, embrace feeling everything or nothing, and just, like, pave this, like, path for yourself and how your own personal relationship with the Force is, and not how this order is telling you how to feel the force. I would also say not to lean into the attachment is taboo thing. Mm -hmm. I think I think we see in, in the High Republic that the Jedi did once sort of try to find that balance, but they were still kind of going, no, we can't do that. But if they could find 
there is a middle ground because mm -hmm. attachment is a part of everybody's life in one way or another. So if they could find that in the new Jedi Order that she starts, I, I would like to see that. Yeah. And it, uh, that would be good for their sake and because it makes for great storytelling for that us. Too, that I too. Not, those are the stories I want to read and watch. Um, I, I think maybe not becoming generals in a war, is that's something they should probably it's avoid. It's a good start. Yeah. yeah, that's my that's my only thing. Wait, what was it, advice? It was, <laughs> what would you do in a oh, Jedi Order? Okay, Jedi Order. Uh, probably, I guess therapy is a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you know, like people make mistakes. I feel like there was like this level of like perfection that came with the Jedi. With, you know, in A New Hope with Kenobi, he's willing to let Luke make mistakes. And he's like, it's okay, you're going to grow from this. And then Luke took that to like the way far far left mm -hmm. and was like no Grogu you can't do anything yeah. get out I'm gonna send you in a ship <laughs> like I feel like there was something lost there of like Jedi had to be perfect and perfection mm -hmm. um, so just knowing that people are people I think or creatures or aliens um, that letting them make mistakes yeah awesome thank you so much for your question uh, next question hi um, I guess my question is uh, if Ray met like Ahsoka at one point in the future, how would you imagine that scenario playing out? Because I feel like at this point, Ahsoka's become like the connective tissue between the prequel era, the Rebels era, the Mandalorian slash Boba Fett era. And if we're going by Rise of Skywalker's like voice cameo bit, she's either still alive or a force ghost Ray could communicate with in the future. So what do you think that interaction, how that would play out since Ahsoka was once kind of in race position of this female character who became a protagonist who people did not take to at first yeah. and now can't imagine living without. I feel like she would say, don't start a Jedi Order. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of the people sort of around Rey, because Rey's knowledge of the Jedi Order comes from Luke and it comes from the books. So they have this kind of idealized version of what the Jedi are. And I feel like if she were to meet Ahsoka, she'd be like, yes, but and then kind of sort of elaborate on where, on where the order went wrong and kind of all of the pitfalls that, that Ray could experience in starting an order or not. So that's probably what would happen. I'm not sure exactly how that interaction would or should play out, but I want to echo something, or as you said earlier, which is that um, I want to see that in a book. I want to be in, mm -hmm. in and I, I want that with Ahsoka and Luke too. I want to be in their heads when this happens. And I would love to get that in book form too, if Ahsoka ever gets to meet Ray in the future. All I can go off of is what we know of her meeting Luke, and it seems like she would be like, hey, what's up? Oh, you're starting a Jedi Order? Cool, high five, see you later. Because <laughs> like, that's kind of what she did with Luke. She was just like, looks good. And then, uh, no, but I think she would be supportive of Rey and would tell her, you know, do things your own way, trust your own instincts. Um, because that's what Ahsoka does. So she well. she kind of has wine aunt energy in that yes. fashion, like <laughs> yeah. job. the cool aunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, but hands like, back the baby when it starts crying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like yeah. peace out. My ride's here. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would be BFFs to be honest. Like uh, Ahsoka probably wouldn't want to talk Jedi stuff with her. They would just hang out and like talk about their favorite hollow dramas. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, let's yep. move on to the next question. We have a couple minutes, guys, so we're going to try our best. Hi. Um, so, like, Ray is easily, like, one of my favorite Star Wars characters, like, easily, like, top five. Uh, the moment that, like, that made her one of my favorite characters was in Force Awakens uh, when she used the Force to grab uh, Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from the snow. Like, that. when I saw that in theaters, that, like, om that almost made me want to, like, uh, that, like, made me want to, like, uh, go up and we, like cheer in the theater like, yeah, go Ray. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but my question is, something I noticed is that Ray uh, has used a different, uh, different like types of lightsabers in all three movies. She's used uh, Luke's, Kylo Ren's, Leia's, uh, the yellow one she's built, even the Sith version of her had like her own uh, lightsaber. My question is, uh, of uh, the different uh, lightsabers she used, which ones would you have her like uh, main with, like have uh, be like her main lightsaber? What's your name? Uh, Aziz. Aziz, hi. Uh, so I like the yellow one. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. No, I, I, I really wish we got to see more of her with the yellow lightsaber. I, I 
strongly believe they should have introduced that at the beginning of The Rise of Skywalker and had her fight with that throughout the movie and not with someone else's. <laughs> yeah, I was always a fan of the, the double-bladed, the, yeah, the hinge yeah. lightsaber, the, because... I thought she was going to have one with the staff in, the, in TFA. Same. I was exactly. like set up for a joke that she didn't have a double-sided. I wanted her to have like the Jedi Temple guard saber, because oh. like, she can oh, fight yeah. with the staff, yeah. give her a big, yeah. long lightsaber. I, I like her yellow one best, and I think in an ideal world, Great that would have been a double-bladed like. I'm judging you all on your answers. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. <laughs> oh, the yellow as well. And I would love to see her build it out even further and to have it turn into yes. the staff saber. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it the, the Rise of Skywalker novelization may have mentioned, like, that's the plan, is to make the double-bladed mm -hmm. lightsaber? Like, Eventually. I think the, the other pieces of it are mentioned in the book or something. So, yeah, I mean, like, if, when, we, when we continue <laughs> Ray's journey eventually, hopefully on screen... Um, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't do that. And like that really did seem to be the direction we were going the whole time, and I don't know why we didn't pull the trigger. And it's such a cool design, too. It's yes. really well designed. Aziz, thank you so much for your question. Appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next question. All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Hi. <laughs> my name is Aaron, uh, commander at the Resistance Broadcast. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, so I want to ask you guys what your favorite, like, small moment is of Rey, because everyone talks about like the big moments, the her yes. uh, with the lightsaber at, at the end of TFA, her um, duel with Kylo in the throne room in uh, TLJ. So like for me, the uh, my favorite little moments of Rey is like uh, how she appreciates um, each planet that they visit. Like, oh look, there's so much green here. Mm -hmm. Oh look, it's raining. <laughs> so the little moments like that. Um, what are your guys' favorite ones? There's the moment on Octu when she's touching the rain as it's falling down, and it seems like such a, a novel thing to her because she's grown up on Jakku where it's dry and there's no rain, and that was just like such a great little moment because it's, it's small. It's not like a big deal, but it says so much about her character, and it, it's like you said with the, you know, there's so much green. I never knew there was so much green out in the galaxy. It's those little moments that I love about Rey. I wish I had a meaningful one, but this little very funny moment to me is when she's trying to fix the Falcon and Finn is handing her the wrong tools That's and she's like, going, no, head. no and she's like not being helpful I'm like this is such a mood yeah. so I just I, I love that little moment uh, when she's sitting outside of her her AT, -AT home and in, yeah. in chowing was down, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's this like great thing that I think has been picked up a lot in like Ray related fan fiction where Ray just loves to eat. Yeah, and I yeah. love that like people who write fan fiction just took that and ran with it. It's just really delightful to me. Um, so that little moment, that little quirk was was great. I was gonna say the same one. Just we talked about it earlier her fangirling and like putting the helmet on, mm -hmm. just like. Having a great time. Yeah. Just in there. Um, you guys gave good ones. Uh, I, I would guess when she confronts Tito was, is like one of my favorite scenes, yeah. uh, just where she's like speaking in his language and everything. That's her first line. No, ma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that. Thank you so much for your question. Guys, we have three minutes left. So what I'm going to do is I, I want to have each and every one of you ask a question. Maybe if one of you want to take it. So sure. go ahead. Hi. Nice uh, shirt. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> name's Mike Lovins. Um, really, just quick statement is that my son, who was born in 2003, so right during the prequel era, I named him Lucas. I expected him to be my Star Wars buddy. He couldn't care less about Star Wars. <laughs> A couple years later, my daughter, and then we get Ray. She loved it. She was my Star Wars movie buddy. So I just. Aww. Awesome. And my, my quick question is, if we do get continued Ray stories, would you like to see Ghost Ben as part of that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't I, want him to be a ghost. I want him to come back. We don't see him as a ghost, so. Exactly. We don't see him anywhere. I will take what I can get. If we can only get a ghost, crumbs. I'll, take the ghost. I'll take crumbs. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, two minutes left, guys. Uh, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, hi, my name is Kyle. I had a, more of a statement, I guess, than a question. Um, I was, I'm really a fan of The Last Jedi deleted scene. Um, it's supposed to be one of her tests where um, she hears an alarm and she goes to the caretaker village and it turns out to be, you know, just having a party. <laughs> uh, because to me, it's kind of a, 
draws a through line between Anakin, Luke, and Rey as far as them being very impulsive, but their impulsiveness is on the side of doing the right thing and trying to help people. I just wondered if anyone had any uh, commentary about that particular del deleted scene that probably shouldn't be a deleted scene from the movie. I mean, it's just interesting because Luke's like, I have three lessons for you. And then the movie's like, we only have two lessons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I thought it was a really cool scene and I kind of wish they kept it in. Um, but at the same time, I get why they cut it because it was just like one of those weird kind of darker scenes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. All right. We can do this one minute. What's up? <laughs> I'm Ryan from nowhere, Delaware. Basically nowhere. Hey, Ryan. Um, love you guys. It's been an amazing panel. Uh, I feel like a big thing with Ray I love is it's a lot about identity with her and figuring out like where she stands in all this. So I was curious what your favorite quote from Ray in regards to her identity is. Mine is people keep telling me I got to find my place in this. I'm afraid no one knows who I am. I think that's a really good quote, actually. I think that really sums up who she is and where her journey goes. I shared mine earlier. So. Yeah. yeah. I agree. <laughs> Sorry. Ryan, no, you're good. Thank, thank you, you so much. Okay. You're killing it. Let's get that final question in with these 30 seconds left on the clock. Hi, it's a very small question. And how has, my name's Karen. Uh, how has Ray allowed you to build it? I mean, how much has it impacted you to build a niche in Star Wars? Because I feel like a lot of us were, a lot of girls, especially immigrant girls, were a little scared to be part of the fandom. Mm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear the question. I didn't hear what the question. She said, how do you uh -huh. feel about how Ray's changed the fandom? Because you, you, as a girl, you were scared to be a part of Star Wars. Ray's kind of enforced, right? Yes, what, correct. Being a part of the fandom. I mean, she, she was my gateway into larger <laughs> fandom. So yeah, she's, she's yeah. really changed the game. I mean, we wouldn't be doing this. And we wouldn't see all these amazing cosplayers here, little girls dressing up as Ray. It, it's, it's amazing. Like, it's changed the game. <laughs> what was your name? Karen, and uh, I have a small gift if I can. Hi, sure. Karen. Hi. Uh, Karen, thank you so much. Uh, guys, this was amazing. Uh, we, we really do uh, realize, especially now in Star Wars Celebration 22, that Rey is, is one of the best characters, and she's just so so significant. I want to thank all my panelists up here. You can see uh, where you can find them, uh, Maggie. Arzu, Laura, Lacey, and Molly. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I can I say something really quick? Absolutely. Uh, can we take a quick photo with everybody of the, at the panel? We're gonna take a selfie really quick, and then after, if all the rays can come up, we want to take a picture with all the rays yeah. that are here. Okay, cool. Go ahead, sorry. Continue. Continue. So who's taking the picture? Oh, well. I'll try. Oh, oh <laughs> my arm isn't long finish. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hey, 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 everybody get out. I'm not. Smile, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs>